Hello everybody, Kenneth Hollins here with hollinsmusic.com and uh, mykeyboardconnection.com and I just simply wanted to uh, just take a few moments and uh, actually go live and uh, share a few things with you. I actually wanted this to be a uh, opportunity where I can kind of share some spontaneous things about me being live. Um, I definitely welcome questions. And I wanted to spend a little time on organ. Um, for all the organ lovers out there, wanted to spend a little time on the organ and show you a few uh, different things that I try to do when I'm on the organ, as well as um, hopefully some things that you could possibly incorporate to your playing as well, okay? So at any point in this particular video, if you have any questions, feel free to ask and um, I'll definitely do my best to try to answer those for you. But what I wanna to try to do today is um, take a song, take a basic song that's real standard, and uh, I'm gonna play it uh, what I would consider to be the standard or basic way to play it, and then go back and, in a sense, try to reharmonize uh, the song, try to give you uh, some different approaches to playing it um, a different than just the standard way, okay? And hopefully this will be uh, something that you could also take and apply to your uh, different songs that you play to give you some different approaches as well, okay? So let's take... So what we'll do, we'll take the song, Thank You, Lord, and we're going to do it in the key of E flat. And what I will do is play this the standard way first, and then we'll go back and uh, talk about a little bit about... Um, how to reharmonize it, how to change it up a little bit, okay? All right, so this is Thank You, Lord, in the key of E-flat, and this is like the standard way of playing it. So that's like the standard way of playing Thank You, Lord. So again, this is in the key of E flat, okay? And this is a real common song. It's not, it's not complicated. It's not hard to play. Um, and so basically, you know, we have some real standard changes here. We're moving from the one, and then we went here, which is actually a, a three. It's a dominant seven with a flat nine over the three. Just that alone, I could really change that up and, um, you know, give you some different alternatives. So what I do is I'll play it maybe a couple of times through and uh, try to change it up. So all of this is spontaneous. So this will be off of the top of my head. This won't be anything rehearsed or practiced or planned or anything. So I do this off of the top of my head and then go back and break down some of the things that, um, that I'm doing. Okay. All right. Here we go.
Jesus. Thank you, Lord. With just a few little extra things and I tried to throw in there, okay? Let's see if we can. Okay, there we go. So now, what did I do? Now, on some of the things uh, that I did, um, I used uh, some setup chords or chords that um, were used to set me up for um, the target chords that I was going for. Okay. Okay, now, what I mean by that is when, when I play, I, I look at the song and I look for what I call target chords, okay? And by target chord, I mean like the main chords that's in the song. So for example, first chord is this. E flat major. And then we go to B flat major over D. And then we go to C minor. So I look at those like target chords, okay? So what I try to do is I will try to put um, uh, passing chords in between the target chords. Of course, it's going to lead me to the uh, the target chord. So, for example, instead of going from the one straight to this chord here, which is B flat over D, I could look at this like this is a target chord. Okay. So, since D is my bass note, I'm going to focus on that note. And what I do is this. I find what's a fifth above the bass note, okay? So D is the bass note, and so a fifth above D would be this. I would simply play the D major scale. One, two, three, four, five, okay? So a fifth above D is the note A. So I know that's gonna be the chord, some type of A chord that's gonna take me to this D chord, okay? Let me show you how I'm, I'm, how I'm working this. Instead of going straight to the B flat over D, I'm going to play some kind of A chord and then go to the D, like this right here. Okay, you see how I did that? I'm going to do it again. This is the uh, A chord moving to the, to the D chord, okay? And specifically what I played was an A dominant 7 sharp 5 sharp 9. To give you the voicing just in case you want it. I played that right there. I'm playing G with my left hand. My right hand is playing C, C sharp, and F. And then my foot pedal is on the note A natural. Put all that together. Okay, so from the beginning, B flat major, then... major over D. And then I'm going to keep going. Now normally it will go to uh, C minor right there, okay? Which is the sixth. And, and um, naturally in music, the sixth, the sixth chord is minor. And so one thing that I like to try to do, just to kind of make it a little bit more modern sounding, one thing that I would do is take the uh, the sixth minor, take the fifth of the minor chord. This is a C minor chord. We're gonna take the fifth of the C minor chord, which is G, and raise it up a half step. And it gives you more of a modern sound. So let me put just that much together so you can hear it. Normally it would sound like this. Just the little changes that I made, okay, with the passing chord and then taking the sixth minor and taking the fifth of the sixth minor, or the minor six, should I say, and then um, raise up the fifth of that. This is what it sounds like. Okay, see what we're doing? So instead of just C minor, we take the fifth it up a half step okay and someone would say well that's not c minor anymore you could say it's a flat major over c okay i'm just using c minor as an example 
as an easy way to um, to do this little change here, where you take the fill, raise it up a half step, okay? Another thing that you can do with this same thing, though, is on the C minor, we raise the fifth, but also in, in, um, include the, uh, the natural five, two at the same time. Okay, so we can have something like this right here. So I have the sharp five and the natural five at the same time, okay? It's going to be like this with C as my bass note. And if you want to, you can throw that flat seven in there, which would be the B flat. So this would be probably a nice voicing. A flat, B flat, E flat, and G. To get a uh, real nice modern sound, okay? So let's try that again. else that I do now a lot of times when I have a chord and I want to play a one major chord with a five bass note which is real common what I would do many times is make it major seven over five or uh, to make it simple if I have like a major triad right here E flat G B flat I'll take this one and just play a half step below that while still playing it so I have a major seven and a one together. So my instead of just a major triad, I, I have that with a five as my bass note. Okay, and then you can change the voice and if you want to. It still sounds like a one over five, but it gives you just a nice little crunch in there. Okay, so let's put all that together. there too if you want but we go to the two now now this is real common right here to do this which is simply um left hand e flat right hand is a b natural d and g and then the full pedal is the note f and then normally we would go to the five, right? So like a five suspended seven or a five uh, suspended 13, uh, which would be uh, specifically B flat suspended seven or B flat suspended 13. Now, one thing I've learned that you can do to change it, instead of going to the five, you can go to the flat seven, a major seven on the flat seven. Let me show you what I mean. Instead of doing this, to the five one thing you can do is go to the the flat seven what's the flat seven one two three four five six seven we flatten it and so instead of the five which is b flat we're going to go to the d flat and we're going to play a major seven on that okay so you have uh We're not going to go to the five. We're going to go to the flat seven. Okay. And then we're going to set ourselves up for the five. Now we're on the five. Okay. Y'all see how I did that? Now when I was on the flat seven, this is what I played. I played F, A flat, and then the right hand I played C, E flat, F, A flat. And this is real standard, you know, this is not anything uh, super, super complicated. And then the foot pedal's on the note D flat. And then... Okay, again. We go here, 
left hand is E flat and A. Right hand is D flat, F, and A flat. Put pedals on the note B flat. And we really do go to the B flat suspended, um, suspended ninth actually right here. Okay, right hand is E flat. Excuse me, left hand is E flat, A flat, B flat. Right hand is C, E flat, and then B flat. Okay, and then I think I did something like this. So instead of going back to the one again, what I did was I kind of um, did a movement off of my melody. Okay, so normally this is what you would do. And then you would go back to the one, right? Right. But but instead of going to the one, I wanted to change the chord up, but still have the same melody note, which is G. So. to the one with the G on the top, I'm going to go to the three with the G on the top. And this is actually um, G suspended 13. Left hand is F, G, A. Right hand is C, E, G. Put pedals on the note G. We can throw that in there real quick. And that's just uh, F, left hand, right hand is B, C sharp, E, and G. And then we can go to G dominant seven. Left hand is still on the F, right hand is B, D, F. Just holding down the G with the thumb. This is with the right hand, of course. And then D and F. Moving to C and E flat. Moving to B and D. Back to C and E flat. Here we go here. C dominant seven with an added ninth over E. Then. Okay, let me see if I have any questions. Oh, we do. Okay. Okay, Jonathan has some draw bar questions. Okay. Um, okay. Thank you, Jonathan. I really appreciate that. Okay. Let's see here. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Blocks Games. Okay, I will save this live. <laughs> okay, well, it, it looks like I only have one question. Um, and it was about the actual draw bars. Well, I will share with you the draw bar setting that I'm using, um, real standard. Uh, I'm only using, I have the first four pulled out. And then I have this, um, this white one here pulled out. And then this last white one here, okay? I actually did a video not too long ago uh, talking about draw bars and you know how to get certain sounds so to me this is kind of a bright sound but not too edgy and so this is um, what I'm using for this now vibrato setting I actually have the vibrato turned off so I don't have any vibrato on uh, right now okay and if um, if I did it would sound like this this is off this is on and I have it set, the vibrato um, knob is set on C3. Okay, but I actually didn't have it on at all while playing. I'm just using my Leslie switch.
right, so that's thank you, Lord. I did that in the key of E flat. Just wanted to uh, share just some basic things that you can do, um, you know, to try to reharmonize it or to change it up a little bit. If you, you know, want to play something different, hopefully that, that will give you some ideas. Are there any questions uh, before I, I uh, log off? Okay, let's see here. Okay, well, somebody asked a question. Oh, good question. Okay, well, two questions. Um, can you uh, detail how to set the organ for soloing? Okay, and then how do you practice the organ when you're at home? All right, those are good questions. So let me answer the first question first. All right. When I'm on the organ, you know, uh, you know, trying to take a solo, what I would try to do is um, take advantage of the percussion. If the percussion is working, so I turn on my percussion. You know, uh, depending on the sound that you want, you can turn it on soft, or you can turn it on normal. Then you also can play with, um, you can play with the third or the second harmonic of the of the of the percussion. This is the third. This is what the second sounds like. This is the third. It's almost like you can hear the third more. You can hear it a little bit better, like it stands out. So if I was playing um, a solo, so and, and we can take the same song. So what I'll do is I'll chord with my left hand and solo with my right, and I. So I call it like, it's kind of like a jazzy kind of sound. So maybe something like this. maybe use a sound like that if I wanted to be jazzy. Um, if I was playing a different kind of song, I think that would be a little bit more appropriate. sound like that could be real good when you have like uh, a groove oriented song or it's like rhythmic and you know you could really take off with like a solo you know you could really really try to work that now, if you're going if you're going for more of like a churchy kind of sound, you know, one solo thing that I use uh, is I'll pull out all of the draw bars except for the first one, and then it gives you that old Mississippi man's choir type sound. Like that it's not about the the complexity of it it's about you know really making that melody sing and you know uh, letting people really hear that melody and you know make it really stand out and that's a good um draw bar setting to do that again with all of them pulled out with the first one uh, pushed in and then i did now on this one i did use my vibrato 
This is with it off. This is with it on. Sometimes, if you really want to go for an old school sound, you can put it on one of the V settings. Like V3. That's, you know, that's really old school. You know, if you like that kind of thing, you know, you can go for that, okay? Let me see here. Uh, okay, and then somebody asked me about how do you practice on the organ at home? Well, that's a real good question. And then sometimes that can be a challenge, especially, you know, if, um, you know, you play, you're playing and when you're at church, say for example, the issue is you play, you play organ at church. And then of course at church, if you're playing a full size organ, you have your Leslie switch, you have your Leslie speaker, you have um, foot pedals, you have your expression pedal. So you have all of these different things um, on, a, on a real organ that you may not have on a keyboard with just an organ sound, okay? But you really still can practice. You know, you just approach it as if it's an organ. Um, <laughs> now this may seem a little weird, but I, I actually used to do this. I would put it on the organ sound. Say for example, this is my keyboard. Okay, and I put it on a nice organ sound. I would practice it like an organ. And I would sit down in a chair, and with my left foot, I would imagine myself uh, <laughs> uh, uh, playing foot pedals. <laughs> I know that sounds weird, but I actually would do that. But I think, I think it's a legitimate way to practice because it gets your mind thinking, you know, not only am I playing chords, but I'm also using my foot. So that may be one way you can approach it. Think in your mind, okay, so what foot pedal would I be pressing with this chord? And one good thing about practicing uh, on a keyboard, it gives you an opportunity to really work on trying to be smooth. You know, that's one thing about the organ. You want to try to make sure your, your chords are real smooth without a lot of choppiness. You know, like, you know, you want a real flowing. try to get a real smooth sound and I believe sometimes practicing on the, on the piano or a keyboard actually actually helps you do that especially when you're not using your sustained pedal it forces you to try to get a real smooth sound but those are great questions any more questions okay well if there are not any more questions I really appreciate you guys hanging out with me just wanted to go live and just share a little bit on the organ um i know we have some organ lovers out there and there may be some people that you play keyboard but you're interested in transitioning over to the organ you know you can do it it's just a matter of just learning just you know the little differences about the organ and um getting comfortable with it okay so you guys thank you so much uh for um spending this little time with me uh as always you can go to my website which is hollandsmusic.com and uh, you can get more lessons. You can go to the blog where there are lessons on there. You can subscribe for free where uh, I will email you different lessons, as well as I have several things in my store. You can go on uh, in the store and find several different videos uh, for organ and piano that I believe will, will help you. And again, that's Holland's Music, hollandsmusic.com, H-O-L-L-I-N-S, music.com. And then I have a uh, a subscription-based blog called MyKeyboardConnection.com, and I have several videos for piano, organ um, on there that go into a little bit more detail, okay? Uh, one more question. Do you always uh, play rootless voices on the organ? Uh, question, no. No, I don't. Uh, it depends on the situation. Um, if I'm playing with a bass player, then I'm going to play rootless voices because I don't want to get in the way of the bass player, okay? 
And uh, sometimes I would just play the bass notes. Uh, you all remember that old Jump Peaky song? song Jesus is real I think this is a good example now if I was with a bass player that was playing the right notes I wouldn't approach it like what I just did I started off kind of playing uh, my pedal sticking a little bit here there we go I started off playing with uh, kind of like with my left hand as the bass and then I, I kind of switched over to my pedals so If I'm with a bass player, I probably would approach it like. You know, so if I'm playing by myself, well, not by myself, but with a bass player, I would probably approach it completely different than so if you're with a bass player and i'm stressing he's playing the right notes you don't want to step all on top of them with playing a lot of different bass notes yourself and it, at that point it'll sound like you guys are fighting with one another and you don't want that okay so to answer your questions i play rootless voicings when i have someone else playing the uh, bass or if I'm playing the bass on my foot pedals. But if, um, you know, if I don't have a bass player, a lot of times I play uh, ruleless voicings with my hands, of course, but then I'm, I'm playing it, that, that, uh, the bass note with my foot, okay? I hope that answers your question. All right, Brazil in the house. Thanks for watching it all the way from Brazil. Okay. All right, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed that. I hope it's something that you can incorporate into your plan, and I will see you real soon. Uh, check out my website, hollandsmusic.com, H-O-L-L-I-N-S, music.com. If this is your first time watching this channel, make sure you subscribe, and um, I think it's a little bell or something that you can click on so you can get notifications uh, when I go live, okay? All right, guys. Really appreciate you, and talk to you real soon.